from the previous video we have discussed the different topics that you will be expecting in your IGCFC and Excel examinations and today we are going to go into the other set of um, the discussion remember now we should have a zone of silence because your may june exams are fast approaching and you have to keep on preparing very well in order to perform and get good grades that you are expecting one of the topics that you need to begin with is um, moment of force this is one of the topic that is really you have to be ready for it because it has to be tested something that you need to remember first is uh, moment is the turning effect of the force and we see different moments uh, this concept of moment in different uh, aspects we can be able to experience a turning effect of a force when you're opening a, a door you can also see a turning effect when you're closing or opening your laptop when you are using a spanner you remember that is a turning effect of a force because as you apply a force on a spanner uh, actually what you see is that uh, the nut or the bolt turn in a given direction moment is force times a perpendicular distance and since force has the unit newtons and distance meters then we have the si unit for moment to be newton meter so when you are doing this calculation ensure that your force is newtons and distance is in, it, in meters sometimes you can work out a moment when you have a unit in centimeters but ensure that the units are of distance are the same if in meters the both of them have to be in meters let us look at this example on a past question that have ever been asked we are given a, a block that is suspended from the plank between the two supports then we are supposed to work out the weight of the block uh, we are told that the weight of the block is uh, 260 newtons and we are supposed to see the formula linking moment force and perpendicular distance which we can be able to see here so moment equal to force times perpendicular distance that we had stated at the beginning of the video um by taking moments about point a we are taking moments about this particular point then we are supposed to state the value of f what force will be acting at this particular point remember the block is exerting a downward force which will make this system to move in clockwise direction but this support at b which is f actually is um making this plank of wood to move in the, in the anti-clockwise direction so we are going to say clockwise moment equal to clockwise moment the clockwise moment in this case is 260 times 25 because we are going to take this a as the pivot so the distance from the pivot to where the cable is pulling down is 25 so clockwise moment will be 260 times 25 and the distance from where f is acting to the pivot now is actually 80 because you are going to add 50 25 plus 55 so the distance from where the force is acting to the pivot the distance we shall use is 80 so which means our um, f we can get it by dividing by 80 both sides and the answer is going to be 81.25 newtons then we are supposed to explain what will happen to the magnitude of the force if the block is moved towards b remember f remains where it is so the distance from a to where f is remains the same What's changing is the distance of the block. It's moved towards B. So when it's moved towards B, distance is going actually to increase. And if distance is increased, the clockwise moment is going to increase. So the force F will increase because clockwise moment will be greater due to increase of distance from point a to where the block will be in another set of question we are told a pencil has a weight of 0 0.16 newton what is the mass of the pencil in order to work out this you need to remember that weight 
equals to mass times the gravitation of field strength, then mass will be W divided by G. Then since we can now substitute 0 0.16 divided by 10, our mass is going to be 0 0.016 kilograms. But if you see the options, the options were given in grams, so we have to change 0 0.16, 0 0.016 kilograms. So grams by multiplying that answer by 1000, and then we get our answer to be 0 point, rather 16 grams, which is option B. The diagram shows the pencils with one end resting on a small block. So that end actually is the pivot. Then a finger provides an upward force F to keep the pencil horizontal. Then the weight of the pencil is 0 0.16. Calculate the moment of the weight of the pencil about the pivot and use the formula moment equals to force times perpendicular distance from the pivot. So the moment due to that is going to be 0 0.16 times 3.7 centimeters. And our answer is going to be as shown here 0 0.592 Newton centimeter. Yeah, so that's why I said in the beginning that Sometimes you can work out moment in centimeter, but the SI unit, the SI unit of uh, moment is Newton meter. State the formula, state the moment of force F, and actually that would be moment F is the force, but the distance to the pivot is 7.4 centimeters. So that's going to be F times 7.4, which is going to be 7.4 F Newton meters then we are supposed to show that the force f is 0 0.080 newton and in that case we are going to equate clockwise moment it should be equal to one clockwise moment so that will be 7.4 f equals to the initial value that we had obtained here which is going to be f equals to 0 0.592 divided by 7.4 and our final answer can be shown as 0 0.08 newtons now, as much as you are going through this topic, you need to understand the principle of moment. And actually, principle of moment states that uh, sum of clockwise moment about a point should be equal to the sum of anti-clockwise moment about the same point. In that way, you will say that the system is at equilibrium or balanced. So you need to remember that distance must be from where the force is acting to the pivot as much as you'll be working out in these particular questions. The next topic that you need also to focus on is electricity. You need to understand the definition of electricity as a rate of flow of charge and you need also to understand the formula that connects charge, current and time. So charge equals to IT. Where, which means that charge equals to current in amperes times time in seconds. Whereby we have given an example here, whereby you are told to calculate the amount of charge that flows when two amperes flows through a circuit in 10 minutes. If you look at this question, you are given time in minutes, so you have to do the conversion to seconds. Charge formula is I times current, that is current times time rather, which is going to be 2 times 10 times 60. And this is because one minute is equivalent to 60 seconds. And when you work out this, you are going to get 1,200 columns of charge. Remember, the unit for charge is columns. Current is, uh, in, his, in a circuit, it's actually measured using an ammeter. And the ammeter symbol is given by this one and usually measured in amperes. Remember, when you are given current in milliamperes, you are going to, to, if current is in milliamperes, it means is that current that you had, what you had obtained, which is divided, divided by a thousand. Yeah. So current is measured, is a measure of the amount of charge that flows. So current equals to charge over time. In the series circuit, what you need to remember is that at any given point in a series current, uh, circuit, current is actually the same. So if current that is flowing here is 2 amperes, at this end we shall have 2 amperes. If we have an ammeter here, it will register 2 amperes. 
there is also a relationship between voltage, current, and resistance, which is going to be V equals to IR. That's another formula that you have to remember in the process of your revision. And if you are new to ProfLearn YouTube channel, consider subscribing so that anytime a video like this is uploaded, you'll be notified immediately so that you can be able to ace your grade. Current in parallel circuits. Yeah, that's another aspect that you need also to look at because if current here of four amperes is flowing, depending on the resistance of these two bulbs, this current is going to split in the junction so that a current of three amperes can flow this direction and another current of one ampere will flow in this direction. And the reason as to why more current is flowing here is because this bulb might be a bulb of actually uh, low resistance, so more current will pass in this route. But what you need to remember is that when current is passing here and then it's joining from this other end, it will recombine to have four amperes the way it was on this far end. So meaning current is conserved. Ammeter is always connected in series with other components. Um, this also should remind you that uh, a voltmeter which measures voltage should be connected in parallel with the component because it is uh, a high resistance device. Now, the equation connecting voltage, uh, current, and resistance is actually V equals to IR. Resistance should be in ohms, current should be an amperes and voltage or the potential difference is measured in volts. So this circuit that we are having here is actually a circuit that can be used to investigate ohms law. So if you are told to draw a circuit that can be used to study or investigate the voltage and current in a component this is actually you are what you are supposed to draw so if we have a component there actually this component that i'm talking about and maybe let me mention about what is the purpose of everything here so ammeter is to measure the current in the circuit voltmeter is to measure the voltage in the component voltage across the component and the variable resistance purpose is to ensure that you can vary the current in the circuit so that you can be able to take different reading for voltage and current and then from there you can be able to draw a graph if you have a straight line it means the material that was used at this area is an ohmic material a material that obeys ohm's law is known as ohmic material but those that do not obey ohm's law it means that uh, uh, you are going to have a curve rather than a straight line like this one. And remember, Ohm's law states that uh, the PD across uh, a component is directly proportional to the current through a component is directly proportional to the potential difference provided temperature and other uh, physical conditions are kept constant. So if uh, if uh, you have an ohmic material you are going to have a straight line which implies that current and voltage are directly proportional if you increase um, voltage current also increases and from this type of graph you can be able to get now resistance of this material by working out the gradient of uh, the line electrical energy in a circuit can be calculated from the formula IVT current times voltage times time and from here we know that um, IV is actually power so meaning electrical energy can be worked out from the formula power times time time should be in seconds power should be in watts we have a question find the electrical energy supplied by a heater connected to a power supply of uh, 230 volts and 2 amperes for 5 minutes. So you re you can see the formula to use here is 2 uh, IVT, current times voltage times time. But in this case, we have to convert the 5 minutes to seconds so that we can be able to get our answer in 138 kilojoules 
which can also be written as 138,000 joules. Remember, when you are converting to kilojoules, you divide the answer you have by 1,000, which becomes 138K. K in physics represents 1,000. Now, after having that kind of discussion, now let us go into the exam set kind of questions. A family has a television set. The television set has a power mode called standby. When on standby mode, the power rating of the television is 0 0.27 watts. We are supposed to calculate the energy transferred to the television set on standby in 12 hours. Now, what will we do here? Energy equals to power times time. In watts, this is going to be um, 0 0.27 watts times 12, but we know that we have 3,600 seconds in one hour, so we have to do the conversion there. And if we work it out, we're going to get 11,664 11, joules. In normal use, the current in the electrician is uh, 0 0.31 amperes. We are supposed to explain how a fuse works to protect the television set uh, if there is a fault. Remember, if there is uh, a fault, there is a surge, and there is a lot of current that is going to flow through the circuit of the uh, television set. In order to, pr to protect this television set against that surge of current, then the fuse is connected. And this particular fuse actually allows only 0 0.3 amperes to pass, up to 0 0.31 amperes to pass. But if a current more than that flows through the fuse, then the fuse is going to heat up and this is going to melt the wire of um, a fuse, hence breaking the circuit. And this stops the flow of current, thus protecting the appliance. So when a fuse heats up, actually the wire, a thin wire in the fuse is going to melt and this is going to break the circuit. That is the symbol explanation on how a fuse works to protect an electric device. Explain why a 13 ampere fuse is not an appropriate choice of fuse to use in the plug of this television set. And you can see it's 0 0.1, but 13 ampere fuse means uh, it will only melt if a current more than 13 amperes is going to uh, flow through. Now, since the TV operates at a much lower current, which is uh, 0 0.31, even if there is a current more than the required one, it's not going to melt this fuse. And hence, it's not going to serve that particular purpose it was meant. Something else that you need to understand in this topic of um, mains electricity is the safety measures in electrical appliances. And I've tried to highlight here, we have uh, at wire, we have double insulation. And both of these are meant to ensure that a, a user is not going to get an electric shock in the purpose of using or when it comes, it comes into close contact with the circuit. So double insulation actually is a situation whereby an appliance is covered with plastic so that you cannot be able to to come into close contact with the circuit for you to get electric shock. Um, at wire is connected to the ground so that if there's any extra current that is um, that can be exposed to the user, it can be having um, a path which you can flow to the ground so that a person cannot get electric shock. You need also to understand uh, that uh, a fuse is should be connected to the live wire. Always it should be connected to the live wires because if um, it melts now, there will be no current flowing into the device. Let's peep into the ex exam room further, uh, further and see the kind of question can be asked. You see we are given a circuit here that was built by a student and then we are supposed to state the formula linking voltage, current and resistance as shown here. Then Roman 2, you may be asked to work out the voltage across the 17 ohm resistor. If you look at the 17 ohm resistor, we have 17 ohm resistor, we have 83 milliamperes. 
So for you to work out voltage, you know voltage equals to current times resistance. But this current is in milliampers. That's why I told you that when you are given in milliampers, you have to divide this by 1000 so that you convert it to amperes. Then this becomes 0 0.083 times 1, that is 17, which is going to give us 1.411 as the voltage. Set the voltage across the 6.2 ohm resistor. Also, this one we're going to multiply to by. 0 0.288 times 6.2 which becomes 1.4136 volts we're supposed to ca calculate the current in the battery remember this current is the one that this current splits to have 83 milliamperes uh 288 228 milliamperes so to get the current that was flowing here we are going to add the two of this and this is going to be 331 milliamperes Part B, diagram two shows the second circuit built by a student using the same battery and resistor. And we are supposed to explain how the current in the circuit on the battery will change. Now, the resistors were connected in series. Remember when the resistors are connected in series, we are going to have uh, a high overall resistance in the circuit. So this is going to make um, uh, current to decrease because the higher the resistance in the circuit, the less the current that will be in the circuit. A student investigates how the current in a filament lamp changes when the voltage across the lamp is varied. Draw a circuit diagram the student could use for this investigation. Remember the previous um, section I told you when you are investigating Holmes' law, this is actually the 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 the, the kind of uh, circuit you need to draw. And the purpose of the variable resistor is to vary the current, which also is going to vary the voltage that will be going through the filament lamp. And always remember that a voltmeter should be connected parallel to the component you want to measure its voltage. Describe the relationship between current and voltage on, shown on the graph. You see this is not a straight line graph, it is a curve, which means this is a nonlinear relationship. But another thing that you can notice as current increases, voltage, voltage also increases. So we are going to say as current increases, voltage increases, and the current as well as voltage have a nonlinear relationship. This is because we have a curve rather than having a straight line. Formula linking resistance voltage and current is actually a walk in the park for prof learners. Use the graph to determine the resistance of the filament lamp when the voltage across the lamp is 7.2 volts. That's just a walk in the park. You just go where you have 7.2 volts, go up, check where the line, that dotted line meets the curve, then read the current on the other end. Then since we mentioned that the voltage equals to IR, you can be able to rearrange the formula, the resistance voltage of a current, which is going to be 7.2 divided by 2.4. Because here I got um, my reading 2.4. Uh, because if you look from this point to this point, we have 10 divisions. So you can be able to work that out. And if you work it, you are going to get the resistance is 3 ohms. Further, there is another question whether a student investigates how current in a 60 ohm resistor varies with voltage across the resistor. And then you are supposed to draw a circuit. Actually, we have repeated this uh, enough. So that is uh, the circuit. We are supposed to describe the suitable method the student could use to, for this investigation. The student should uh, switch on the current and then measure uh, the ammeter and the voltmeter reading by varying the variable resistor reading so that you can be able to fill in a table like this. And what you need to ensure when you are taking the reading, the readings, you also need to switch off the current so that you prevent the circuit from overheating. Complete the, the current voltage graph by drawing a line that shows the expected results. So you cannot just draw like that. Huh? You need to remember that you are given current uh, voltage as 12 volts and vol uh, 
resistance at 60 ohms. So we can be able to work out the current that is flowing in this circuit. It will be 0 0.2 amperes. So we are going to go to 12 volts and then we check where we have 2 amperes current, 0 0.2 amperes current, and then we shall draw a straight line like that. And then that's what we shall have. The student repeats the investigation with 120 ohm resistor. Now, when we have high resistance, then current is going to decrease. Then we are supposed to explain how the current, uh, explain how the current voltage graph of uh, this 120 ohm resistor compares with the current voltage graph of 60 ohm resistor. This is going to have um, a gradient, uh, a gradient that is uh, lower. We are going to have a lower gradient. And um, let me just try to, to draw that diagram so that you can see what you you will have there we are going to have a straight line yeah but uh it's going to be of a lower gradient because less current will be flowing the two graphs will have the same shape that is a straight line however a 120 ohm resistor will have a lower gradient since the resistance is high hence there will be a lower current in this particular uh circuit well we are going to move further and actually if you've not watched the rest of uh, the discussion from the first topic of your specification that, that, that uh, according to your syllabus we are going you can check in the description so that you can be able to watch the previous we're going to go uh, on with this series and if you are new here consider subscribing so that end time i'm going to upload the next part of um, this series will be notified.